Hello, my name is Brian Clark. I'm editor of the Medicine Bee, and welcome to today's 2020 general election forum featuring the candidates running for Patterson mayor. They are Dennis McCord, David K Keller, and Mark Miles. Moderating tonight's uh, debate will be B Opinions editor Gar Stapley, and he'll be joined by the Bee's editorial board, managing editor Patty Guerra, B Information and Research Specialist Maria Figueroa, and myself. Garth, take it away. All right, we're so pleased to have these candidates uh, join us. And um, also, this is our very last uh, one that we're doing uh, during this campaign election season. So uh, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, we'd encourage everyone to check out modbeat.com to see uh, the other debates that we've done. Well, let's get into opening statements. Uh, you'll have uh, one minute each, and uh, we'll start with David Keller. Thank you very much, Garth, and it has to be. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Patterson. My wife and I both grew up in Patterson, a former mayor and council member. As a council member, uh, we built the Patterson Aquatic Center, which we hadn't had a swimming pool in Patterson for 25 years. That was a big priority of ours and mine personally. We rebuilt City Hall in the image of the former Hotel Del Cordo, which was destroyed by fire in 1999. Uh, we built uh, baseball, soccer fields, new schools. We laid the framework for the West Patterson Business Park, which has become a, quite a success. And I'm running um, because uh, what got my attention was the Del Porto Canyon Reservoir. And I, I felt like that the city should have been a responsible agency and should have been included in the process. Great, we're probably uh, have a chance to talk about that and uh, appreciate that. Uh, Dennis, would you uh, go next? Okay. Uh, my name is Dennis McCord, and I've been on the city council for the last six years. I've lived in Patterson for the last 21 years, and I've raised my four children here. Uh, my in-laws have moved down here. I have a number of friends that have moved down here as well. Um, I'm trying to make Patterson a better place to live for everybody. We've done a significant amount of work over the last six years in creating new jobs, and we're actually working on creating higher paying jobs. Um, we're actually doing a lot of uh, infrastructure work as well. We're having to repair the water and sewer lines, the roads. We're having to do a lot of the, the groundwork that needs to be done to keep our economy in a good spot. Um, stuff that was neglected in the past, we're paying that attention to that and getting it fixed, but it takes time. Um, it's always funner to build swimming pools than to fix roads, but we need our roads. So I thank you for your time and appreciate it. Thank you, Councilman. I might uh, uh, remind viewers that there uh, is no incumbent in this race. Uh, uh, the, the, the mayor that is mayor right now is, uh, is stepping aside, and so these three are, are all challengers. Uh, David has uh, served uh, before as a Councilman and Mayor, and uh, Dennis is a, a Councilman. And I will turn to Mark. And the guy that has not served yet. <laughs> I do appreciate everybody having me today. Um, I'm a 23 year resident here in Patterson. My wife is a fourth generation Pattersonite, I believe would be the right word. Um, we have two boys. My oldest son, Jacob, is now serving in the US Navy, um, graduated from Patterson High School. And my youngest son, Noah, is a sophomore at Patterson High. Um, I've been highly involved with the schools, with the CTE program, something I believe Patterson um, has to showcase and offer um, a lot of the other schools as getting back into vocation, something I'm extremely passionate about because not every child has the means to go to college. Not every parent has the means to be able to send their child to college as well. Um, I think with my son joining the Navy and serving the country, that served as the catalyst for myself to, to do more in public service. Um, also a member of the Farm to Fork Committee here, which is also centered around the youth here in Patterson. So I think Patterson has a lot more to offer for the youth today, not only today, but to keep them here in Patterson after they graduate or to have them go to co uh, college and then return. Thank you. So we will start out talking about one of the, the issues Mr. Keller brought up. And we'd like to know, what is your position on the reservoir proposed in nearby Del Puerto Canyon? And we'll start with Mr. Miles. So for myself, um, it's been an education process. Um, I have to start by saying that I'm, I'm not against the dam. 
and I'm not 100% sold on the dam being right here um, above our residence. The, we all know that we need water here in California. The way to get the water is to store the water when it's available. Um, we do have to take advantage of that. But I do believe that Patterson has to come first. Um, there is a serious recreation component that I believe the, the proposed um, owners of the reservoir are, are not really willing to, to bend on right now. And I think that's a, that's a shame. Um, we do need more recreation for not just for the kids here in Patterson, but for the adults as well. Um, so at this point, I, I would definitely say that I'm leaning towards the dam, but there has to be, it has to be Patterson first. Thank you very much. And Mr. McCord, your thoughts on the reservoir, the proposed okay. reservoir? Um, I do not oppose the reservoir. Um, we need water. Even the opponents of the reservoir say that they want water. Their main issue right now has been um, they don't like the location of the reservoir. Now, the first thing to know is that Patterson is in the Salado watershed, not the Del Porto watershed. The Del Porto watershed is more north of Zacharias. Now, when it floods, it does flood out beyond that, but it normally fills south of Zacharias and then comes back towards Patterson. Um, so the flooding that would be, we're going to, the Del Porto reservoir will stop flooding in some areas of the town um, when it floods, when it's big floods. Now, that being said, I do want reservoir. I want that flood water held for us when it's flooding, it's flooded 15 out of 60 years. So when it floods, I want them to hold that water. It's about 25,000 cubic acre feet that they would be able, that they're planning on storing in the reservoir. And then I want them to release it now at the end of summer so we can put it back into our aquifers. Most of the cities have already done their, their groundwater studies. We already know where to put that water to get it back into the aquifer. Um, I believe we can get reservation, the uh, get rec recreation, excuse me. And I'll have to come back later because the time's up on that. Thank you so much. Mr. Keller. Thank you very much. Uh, this issue is dear to my heart as a uh, growing up in Patterson. Uh, it came to my attention about a year ago and I, I've got a copy of the editorial from the Master B that says a new lake in West Los County. That sounds like a good idea. And I thought at the, at the risk of the adage of arguing with somebody who buys ink by the barrel, the Mark Twain adage, I'd like to say that I think there's a disconnect between Modesto and Patterson. Uh, and there's a lot of sympathy uh, towards the wood colony of 14,000 acres that outside the sphere of influence of Modesto is protected. And I think for good reason, to protect the heritage of the, uh, the German Baptist community and their farming heritage. So that was my first interest was, hey, this, let's make this a state park. And when I was mayor, I wrote a letter to the Ruth Coleman, the director of the state park, asking for her to consider making Del Porto Canyon a state park. Uh, that didn't happen, of course. It is private ownership. Um, but really, my biggest concern now is that uh, there were 11, 11 locations studied. The only location that involved a dam inundation zone risking the lives and property of a city was the Patterson location. Uh, there's no reason for it. It could go anywhere else. I'm a fifth generation Californian. My father was a farmer. I understand farming. I understand their needs. I understand the need for water. Uh, it's just the wrong location. Okay, we'll start with Mr. McCord on this next question. Uh, this question will have a 30 second answer. So, Mr. McCord, many Patterson residents commute over the hill to Bay Area jobs. How might you keep them working in town? We are working currently. We're getting ready to break ground on 250 new electrical engineer jobs. The Net Zero Company creating small houses, um, which we will sell over to the Bay Area. We're in talk with another manufacturing company to bring in 700 high-paying manufacturing jobs. So we're trying to recruit and uh, increase the salaries here so not everyone has to commute to the Bay Area. Um, so we're focusing that warehouses were good jobs. I mean, they're, they help, they get kids through college, but let's start focusing on higher paying jobs. Okay. Mr. Keller? Well, 20 years ago, there was an ABAG study, which was the uh, Bay Area uh, Stancog equivalent. And they found, they identified Patterson as being ideal for uh, a business park uh, due to its proximity to the Bay Area and I-5. Uh, it has come into fruition. We have jobs. At the time, we thought maybe we would attract high-tech jobs. I don't believe that's true. I think we're a little ahead of that, the, the curve on that. It may take a while. While we do, we have become a jobs importer in Patterson. 
There are more jobs than there are people in Patterson able to fill those jobs. Not a bad thing. We've increased our tax base. I give credit to some of the councils after me, including uh, Councilman McCord, uh, for encouraging those, those businesses. But uh, I would meet with the developers, the property owners, and the business okay. owners. Am I, am I going over? Okay. And finding, uh, uh, get, I would, I would, I'd like to find out what their ideas are about bringing higher paying jobs. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Miles. Yeah, so I'm not going to disagree with either one of, uh, of, of Dave or um, uh, Mr. McCord's uh, comments there. Um, I think we've done a good job of attracting some very large, I'll call them box stars, stores. Um, the one thing that I think we have to look at is our small business owners. Revitalizing the downtown would be a very good segue of attracting small businesses, allowing more people to invest in Patterson, spend their money in Patterson. We increase our tax revenue in that regards as well. Also making sure that the, the large box stores that we have out here, Restoration Hardware, Amazon, that there is a percentage of the Pattersonites that, that are employed out there, a mandatory number, may already be in place, something that I may not be familiar with. But I think that's another avenue that we need to seriously explore. Thank you. Okay, setting aside politics, what has been uh, your single most important contribution to Patterson as a private citizen? And we'll start with Mr. Keller. This is a 30 second question. Please watch me for the time. As a private citizen, I serve my community. I, I contributed as an economic strategic commissioner, a planning commissioner. I was a member of the Rotary Club, the president in 1999. I served on the city council for eight years, the last two years as mayor. I served on Stan Cog. I served on the West, uh, Southwest County Workforce Alliance. I put in a good dozen years working at the city. I've also been a businessman. I operated a truck stop for 20 years with my family at the Wesley exit. So we provided jobs. I understand business. Um, thank you. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Miles. So I, I would have to say by far the, the CTE programs, my involvement with them. Reaching out to, to the youth there in Patterson as, as they're growing up, getting ready to leave high school, starting their adult lives, whether it's college or into the labor force, um, resume building, mock interviews, things prepping these young men and young women for their entry into adulthood. The Farm to Fork is such an amazing event that we've started, we've grown. This would have been our fourth year to unfortunately cut down due to COVID, um, but that's bringing um, a lot of joy to the kids and with the recreation sides, and then just coaching. Okay, and Mr. McCord. I've been extremely active in Patterson for 21 years. I was the president of the Lions Club. I've helped start the host house. I've been very active in schools. So I've helped start the, I was, my family's been involved with the Patterson recognizing individuals determined to excel scholarships. So our kids go to go to college. I helped make the Patterson Education Foundation, uh, get them raising money and helping the community. I'm the Cub Scout liaison. My boys, I have three boys who all our Eagle Scouts. I have a daughter who was in Girl Scouts. We were in Little League. Um, I've helped with DC trips with the middle school. Uh, I helped it in North Mead. I had a number of people remind me of all the things I've done for them. Um, I've been very active in making our community a better place to live um, and for activities for our kids to participate. So that's where I've made a big difference. Thank you. Uh, our next question has to do with the coronavirus pandemic and it's a 30 second answer question. So we'll just give you the 30 seconds. Um, should Patterson do more to enforce COVID safety rules among businesses that are not compliant? And we'll start with Mr. Miles. I'm going to say I'm not familiar with there's any um, violations that's going on in Patterson right now. I know a lot of our small businesses are are in serious need of reopening. Um, I'm not a big fan of a blanket policy that's been placed on the state of California. I think we have to look to the local municipalities to make sure we have clear direction and protecting our citizens. Thank you, Mr. McCord. Um, Patterson recently passed an ordinance that allows um, us to find businesses that they don't require people to put masks on. Um, and I still get calls because people are um, just rushing into stores without masks. We're trying to get the numbers down and we're finally getting down to where we're gonna be able to reopen. As long as people are patient and will do the best they can do, um, Patterson, the schools, the businesses will be able to reopen again, but we need people to pay attention. And 
Patterson is doing everything we can do. We've got new signs up all over the place telling people, we've got new the feather flyers. We're doing everything we can do to keep people understanding that COVID is real. And with a little bit of effort from them, we can get our city back open. Thank you. And Mr. Keller. I agree with uh, both the council member McCord and, and Mark. Uh, Patterson, I, I believe, has done a pretty good job. Uh, I don't see a lot of non-compliance with the businesses or individuals. Uh, I see people wearing masks, and uh, I think that uh, we need to continue until we receive the, the science that tells us when we're able to go back to whatever was normal. Uh, let's ask this question. What can be done to help City Hall find is rebound from COVID. And we'll start with Councilman McCord. Um, the city of Patterson is in much better shape than all the other cities in this area. Since we've been, uh, we budget conservatively, uh, we only took a 7% revenue drop. And most of that was handled with part-time uh, laborers out of the recreation department. Now we went to virtual recreation so the people were still doing stuff. Um, I expect by the next time we do our next budgeting um, that we will recover almost all of that revenue. Uh, unlike uh, Modesto Turlock series, which are taking 20 and 30% cuts, we are taking a very minimal hit. We are growing, we're in great shape. Our finances are in good shape. We're not, we don't have the problems other cities have. Thank you, Mr. Keller, same question. Could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, uh, a lot of municipalities have suffered uh, from a downturn in revenue because of COVID. What can be done to help city hall finances recover? Well, as Council Member McCord said, uh, they've done a pretty good job in, in, in with budget reserves. And uh, I don't see that there will be, a, there probably will be a hit with sales tax. Uh, so I would, I would say that we need to reach out to, uh, I hope we get to this question later about the downtown business, historic business district, but uh, we, we need more outreach to help these businesses that have suffered and had to close down the hair salons, the gyms, and so forth. Uh, possibly there's some PPA money that's available for them. I'm not sure. Thank you. Mr. Miles, same question. You know, I, with both, I agree with both. I think we have to thank the, the previous councils that have set Patterson up for success by having a reserve fund that is allowing us to weather through this pandemic. Um, the other side of it is reaching back out to, to the state if there is resources that we can recover from the state, I think we have to look at that in the small businesses, as Mr. Keller mentioned, is one of the first priorities. We do not have a lot of small business here in town. We cannot lose what we've already got. Thank you. Uh, this next question is a quick 30 second and, uh, answer question. And we'll start with Mr. Keller. What is your personal approach to wearing a mask in public? I wear it when uh, all the time that I am going into buildings, if I'm walking by myself and I'm not interacting with people, I'm socially distancing and sometimes I don't wear it. Okay. Same question, Mr. Miles. I, I'm, I'm, a same, I'm the same way. I will wear my mask every, upon entry to any store, upon any restaurant that we're entering in the parking lot. Once we sit down, the mask is off. If I'm not able to social distance, I too um, do not wear the mask if, um, if, I'm, if, if I'm away from someone by the six feet. Okay, and finally, Mr. McCord. Uh, I, I actively wear my mask and I encourage people to wear their mask because that's the only way we're gonna get the COVID numbers down is for us to do everything we're supposed to do. So whenever I'm visiting people, whenever I'm talking with people, um, indoors or outdoors, I'm wearing a mask. Um, you will might find me in the evening when I'm walking with my son, but sometimes will not wear a mask but there's no one around us, so just, just the two of us are busy. Thank you. This next question is um, answers. Um, communities near freeways like Interstate 5 must constantly confront drug trafficking and human trafficking. What can the city do to reduce these crimes? Mr. Miles. We have to invest heavily in our law enforcement. Patterson is in that crosshair with the, the, uh, the truck stop that we have, which is only three blocks from my house. You know, I can literally look out my window and see it. 
um, we have to have a large police presence uh, with that. We also have to have an active community involvement in ensuring that we watch out for our neighbors. Thank you. Mr. McCord, same question. There's a lot of things we can do. Patterson actually has 30% more police per capita than any other city in this area. And we have specialists who are working in human trafficking. Um, we also need to work with uh, Haven Center because they've got uh, teen outreach people that are working with their with uh, homeless girls or at-risk girls. So they're aware of what the signs are of what human trafficking is so they can report those people and get them stopped as soon as we can. We are definitely in the crosshairs of this. I am very aware that it's in this area and we have arrested a significant number of uh, human traffickers in Patterson. We need to keep it up. We need to educate people. We need to educate our kids. We need to make sure that people know what to look for. And that's the only, when we're educated, that's the only way to stop this is we're all educated. We have the police. Now we just have to make sure the citizens are helping them. Thank you. And Mr. Keller. I think creating awareness of the, of the problem is important. And we've had some great reporters in Patterson that have written articles about these issues, which creates a community awareness. Neighbors are watching out and making sure that uh, what they're seeing is looks right or it doesn't look right. Originally, that West Patterson Business Park was not supposed to have any truck stops. Uh, somehow, the uh, EIR was compromised and allowed them. Maybe that brought in some uh, an element that we wished wasn't here. As far as I-5 itself, that's an international uh, in freeway. I'm not sure that we could do too much about stopping uh, anything that's happening on I-5, but certainly in our own community, we can be eyes and ears and, and watch out for ourselves and use the resources we have in the police and so forth. So. This next question will require a 30 second answer, uh, starting with Mr. McCord. Part of a mayor's role is playing cheerleader for Patterson and persuading others to move here what is the first thing you tell them? Uh, Patterson is an, has an amazing community. The citizens are very active, and we are all active in helping make uh, our youth do stuff. Our seniors are active. Um, it is a great place to raise your family. You can feel safe in this community, um, and it's a great place to live, just straight out. Thank you. Mr. Miles? I think small town. Uh, Patterson has that small town appeal. Um, we've been able to capture that. We may be losing a little bit of sight of that, the feeling that I have right now. But outside of that, the cultural diverse, uh, diversity that we have here in Patterson, it's strong. We really need to harness that. Uh, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that Patterson has, small town, culturally diverse. Thank you, Mr. Keller. Well, just canvassing the neighborhoods is it's like a flashback for me going through my whole life walking in these same neighborhoods. Uh, makes me, reinforces, uh, we have really good people in Patterson. They love our community. Uh, uh, it's safe, in general, generally safe. It has a lot of very nice features that were designed by T.W. Patterson, our town's founder, the Mission Revival architecture in our circle building, the city hall, the actual design of our streets after Washington, D.C., uh, and Del Cordo Canyon. I'm going to throw that back in there because I think it's an important feature we should save for future generations. Thank you. Okay, these uh, next two questions are um, relevant to some other races that are um, in this area that would overlap with some of your um, citizens. So we're <clears throat> on um, who you would be supporting these races. So you, there are 30 second questions, but you may not need that long. So the first one is, who do you support in the, in the race for Congressional District 10 between incumbent Josh Harder and Ted House? We'll start with Mr. Miles. That's a tough one. I think Josh Harder has done a pretty darn good job for the Valley, especially for the farmers, for the water sides. Um, that's a big component. Um, I've met Mr. House. Um, I think there's some opportunities there. Um, I haven't decided yet. Okay, same question, Mr. Keller. Josh Harder. Okay, same question, Mr. McCord. I've met both Josh Harder and Ted Howes, um, and I think that there's the clear winner there is, is uh, Josh Harder. Okay, okay, and then the next race is, who do you support in the race for Stanislaus County Supervisor District 5? That's between Chance Condon and Tom Hallinan. 
and same order, Mr. Miles. I'm looking at Chance Condit right now at this point in time. Okay, same question, Mr. Keller. I support Chance Condit and he comes from a long family of public servants. His grandfather, Gary Condit was very active for many years. He actually held a congressional hearing in Patterson when we had a tire fire in Wesley. And after that congressional hearing uh, was performed or was happened, uh, they put that fire out. So he has the resources within his own family to advise him. And I think he's, he's, he's a hard worker. He's a smart person. And I support Chance Conley. Okay, thank you. And Mr. McCord. Um, I think that both Chance Conley and uh, Tom Hallinan are, would be fine supervisors. Um, I supported both of them in the primary. Um, now that we're in the general race, I would support Chance Condit. Uh, again, his family's been very good at the district. He's a great farming advocate. Um, he is the kind of guy that will help the West Side get things done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Patterson has a unique and attractive and historic downtown. What can we do to help uh, bolster and preserve our downtown and help it to uh, uh, remain the, the important uh, piece of history that it is? Mr. Keller. Well, thank you. Uh, this is one of my favorite subjects. I worry that if we have a bypass on Zacharias Road to I-5, that our downtown will uh, will lose it. Uh, we, the city itself needs to take a leadership role in our downtown. We own the city hall. We required, when I was a mayor, required that all standalone banks are located downtown so that we don't lose our financial institutions downtown. I think we need to clean up our parks. Uh, and make them safe for families again. Uh, I'd like to see the city purchase the Del Porto Theater, the former Del Porto Theater, make it a performing arts center, acquire the former Patterson Drugstore on Del Porto Avenue. We have quite a few vacancies. We have one restaurant that if it were not in operation, that, that street would be pretty much lost at this point. So the city has done plenty of studies. We need to take some action and invest money into our downtown, the city needs to take a leadership role. Thank you, Mr. Miles. You know, as Mr. Keller, uh, it seems like I've looked back several times in the general plan, and it, there's always been a lot of talk about revitalizing the downtown. It just never seems to come to fruition. One, you, we have to attract a, a main attraction. A theater is a great start. You, we can solidify that. I would also like to see the downtown turn into one-way streets with a meandering little bend in each one of them um, off the wagon wheel spoke so to speak, to where we can go on and have um, some outdoor dining and uh, a little bit more of a, um, an area for people to gather, uh, obviously after COVID's done. Um, I've had some very good conversations with the Livermore mayor, um, Turlock. Um, they're all doing a fine job. I think Livermore sets the bar. Thank you, and Mr. McCord. I think we tried to do a number of things and we're still working on that. We have the chamber that's downtown and we're, and we've met with, I can tell you, there were a couple of committees that have tried to uh, organize downtown businesses to get a vision for the downtown that they could all agree to. I've met with several individual owners of businesses and talked with them. Uh, interest rates are extremely low right now. Uh, so I think it would be possible for the city to do like a 0% interest equity program so that if we could get people to agree to a vision um, on a street, we could renovate one area of the street. The owners could put up their, the, the initial costs, the city could put up the interest, um, and we would get a, a basically a brand new vision for downtown. Unfortunately, we need the business people to actually take a stake in it. They got to agree to one vision for their community, and they have to agree that they can put their, their money into it. Johnny's just uh, renovated. The new owner is putting a lot of money into that, uh, and it looks really nice. It's a good opportunity for us to renovate the downtown but we need people to more people to take a stake in it and actually be willing to make that change thank you very much you three seem very courteous and agreeable and um i'm just uh, uh wanting to know what uh what is different between you what sets you apart from your opponents why should voters uh, vote for you as opposed to your opponents mr miles I think for myself, it's the transparency. Um, I've always, one of my biggest strengths is going out, listening to people, being able to, to take their ideas, their opinions, their wants, their needs, um, and then encapsulate that. I'm a quality assurance manager for the Bronco Wine Company. I run everything on data. I run everything on information. 
we take all of that, we bring that back. That actually that actually helps or helps hold accountability. Um, so with that approach in mind, I think that's what separates myself. Thank you, Mr. McCord. Um, I think one of the things that separates me is my uh, long history of working with all the citizens of Patterson. Um, I regularly door knock all of Patterson. I am at all at many many community events. Um, I talk to in a year thousands of people. So I'm answerable to people. They have my direct number when they need help. They call me for help. Um, I'm not there hiding. I'm not in an office somewhere. I am out there knocking on a door, trying to find out what's going on and fixing a problem when I find it in the neighborhood. Thank you. What sets you apart, Mr. Keller? What sets me apart is, is I know the history of the community. I have a record of success. Uh, I had perfect attendance throughout my council and mayor years. I don't miss meetings. I, I know who to talk to when there's an issue. Uh, uh, I'm willing to work hard. I, I don't know, I'm not saying the other two won't work hard. I have a lot of respect for council member Cord and, and Mr. Miles, but I guess, my, I guess I have a proven record of success and I think that um, that's what sets me apart in building finding what the city needs and, and getting things done. Thank you. Now the uh, flip side of that question, we'd like you to share what you appreciate about your opponents. And we'll start with Mr. McCord. Um, actually, I, they're, both of my uh, opponents are very fine people. I've known Mark Miles uh, for a few years. We were involved in the DC trips together with his kids. Um, his son is, went to the Navy, my son was in the Army. Um, he has fine children. His wife's a wonderful person. Uh, there really is no issues with, I mean, I, I think he's a fine person, no issue. Uh, David Keller, uh, again, David and then his wife, I've known them for years. Um, they're good people. Um, there's really nothing that bad to say. We have some disagreements on some issues um, that I think are, the priorities are different, but ultimately it's about um, how we can make Patterson a better place. And I think all three of us want to do that. Thank you. This is a refreshing change from last night's presidential debate. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Keller, what can you share that you admire about your co- well, I, I also have a lot of respect for, and I think it's important to have a positive public discourse and to keep things positive, to be respectful to each other. And uh, in council meetings and all, uh, Mr. Miles, I don't know well, but what I've learned about him is that he's, he loves our community. His wife has deep roots in our community and he cares about it. Mr. McCord, I've known for a number of years and I know he's dedicated, he's an educator and he's loved by the children. I can see that when I see him out canvassing. And so uh, I have a lot of respect for both of them. I think we all have the same love for Patterson and the same intentions as uh, we may not have the, the same priorities in exact order, but uh, mostly we do. Thank you so much. And Mr. Miles. You know what? I think this is what sets Patterson apart from everyone else. We have three gentlemen here that are doing this with their hearts. They're doing this for the community. I, I, I too have the same mutual respect for, for both Dave and Dennis. Um, you know, uh, Dennis is out there. He has to put up with my son um, in math, which can be a struggle sometimes. I know this. Um, we've had some good conversations. <laughs> and I, I unfortunately haven't spent that much time with Dave. I did have a great conversation with his wife um, the other day. I stopped by just to introduce myself. Um, I think all three of us can represent Patterson very, very well. Thank you very much. Well, it's about time that uh, we wrap this up. Um, we know very well that Patterson can get uh, um, a little hairy sometimes when it comes to politics. And so uh, <laughs> perhaps it's nice to see a bit uh, of, a, uh, of a time to, to come together. And, uh, um, but uh, uh, it's not always gonna be that way. Uh, let's do closing statements. Uh, they will be one minute each. We'll start with Mr. Keller. I want to thank the B again for allowing us this opportunity to speak to the public and to uh, talk about our platforms and have this discussion. Um, I think, as I, I, I'm repeating myself at this point, but um, there's, there's quite a bit we can do in Patterson to uh, improve the downtown, to improve our, 
our I-5 West Patterson Business Park structure. We're, we're poised for a large growth spurt. I want to make sure that the citizens of the community receive something in return. Uh, we, we don't just get money raining down from us from the state. It comes from developers and has some negotiation. So um, I love the community. I'd like to have another chance at uh, 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 working with the people of Patterson to make our community better. Thank you very much, Mr. Miles. Well, I'd personally like to thank everybody for their time tonight. Um, it is, it's a great forum. It's a great event when we can have three people vying for the same seat here in Patterson, all get along and agreeing the fact that, that Patterson is a great community, that it does have a bright, bright future. Um, I, I think we can really do something wonderful here um, that everyone can learn from. We, we already have some great programs at the high school. Um, I think we can get this town, downtown revitalized. We get small business in here, attract a lot more small business, um, and, and have a safe community. So again, thank you everybody for the time tonight. And uh, for those of you watching, um, I appreciate the trust and the opportunity. Thanks very much, Mr. McCord. I wanna thank the Modesto Bee for putting this on as well. Patterson has a great future. Um, I've been here for the last six years. I've helped us uh, wind through this period of time where revenues are dropping and Patterson's doing fine. As you know, in 2023, 2024, there's gonna be a large pension crisis in California. Many cities are projected to go bankrupt. I'm gonna do all the work I can do to make sure that Patterson is in good shape for the next four years, that our employees will still have their pensions and we will continue to grow Patterson. I want us to look forward, not backwards. Uh, that's why I wanna be our leader. I'm proven, I've done many, many things. I keep growing Patterson. I will grow our downtown. I believe that I can help do that. I think I can also bring in high paying jobs and working with our CT, our career technical education at the high school. I believe we can use that as a tool to attract those high businesses, higher income businesses. Um, and I just need Patterson. I'm hoping they will believe me and they will help me because together we can make this happen. I can't do anything, we can. Thank you very much. Well, this concludes our candidates forum for Patterson Mayor. We surely appreciate the candidates discussing these, these issues with the Modesto Bee and our viewers. Viewers, be sure to check modbee.com to see all of the Modesto Bee's debates featuring candidates on all levels of government. These forums are available for viewing through the November 3rd election. At modbee.com, you will find debates for Modesto Mayor, three open Modesto City Council seats, two seats on the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors, State Senate, Series Mayor, Turlock City Council, and the Modesto Irrigation District. And earlier today, we posted our candidate interview with Congressman Josh Harder. The Modesto Bee will announce endorsements in all of these races, including this one, starting this Sunday, October 4th. We intend to release one endorsement each succeeding day through October 12th. All will appear at modb.com and in our newspaper. On behalf of the Modesto B Editorial Board, thank you and good evening.